Hello, this is Colleen Shoemaker with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the 2020 May primary election. With me today is Mary Nolan, running for Metro Councilor District 5. Welcome, Mary. Hello, Colleen. Thanks for doing this, and thanks for having me. Our pleasure. Please tell us a little about yourself and why you're running for this office. Well, I'll start with saying that I am a lifelong League member and I appreciate all the voter education programs that the League offers. Um, I'm running for Metro Council because I love Portland. I chose Portland as my home deliberately, as many of us did. And I came here because of its livability, its natural splendor, and its citizen involvement processes at all levels of government. I want to bring that passion, I want to bring that commitment to citizen engagement to the Metro Council, a unique regional government that we have here in Portland. Metro has responsibility for some really important issues, transportation, land use planning, protecting open spaces and habitat, and more recently, uh, responsibility for helping build affordable housing for people who can't afford it, and if the voters approve, potentially for supportive services to help homeless people um, find and stay in secure housing. I bring a depth of experience at the policy level, the legislative level, the budgeting level, and the execution executive level for all those areas. And I want to join uh, with the other members of the council to make sure that Portland stays a vibrant place for everyone who chooses to live here, no matter what their income, no matter what their background. Thank you. What challenges to the effective and efficient operation of our metropolitan government will result from the pandemic? And how do you propose to meet those challenges? Colleen, I'm not sure we know yet what lasting challenges this pandemic will deliver. We do know that it has completely upended our economy. I'm talking with people every day who are personally affected. They've lost their job or their kid or spouse have lost their job. Their business has been shuttered because of executive orders. We still don't know the depth of this, but what we do know is we will be better off if we have a coordinated region, a coordinated response among all three counties and all the cities in the Portland area. That's what Metro can do, and that's what I hope to, to do there. I've built a business that employed Portlanders, brought money into this region, and I know how to help small businesses recover once we open the economy up again. I've been engaged with equity um, efforts and initiatives at the state level, at the local level, as a nonprofit executive. And I can bring that kind of expertise and that connection with community leaders to solving these problems. I don't have all the answers. And anyone who tells you that they have all the answers, um, is, is missing something or is not very self-aware. What I do have is an ability and a commitment to listening to people, to convening all the people who collectively have the answers and to solving the problem in a way that works for the entire community. That's the kind of leadership Metro needs and I plan to offer. Well, Metro is in the process of drafting a regional transportation measure. What expectations do you have that the planned expenditures will achieve state and regional goals for reducing greenhouse gas emissions? That's a really good question. Um, I have big expectations of what a transportation package should do. And I honor the work that has gone on for the last 18 months to develop the plan that has, is, is in its current state, not yet referred to the voters. The council, the Metro Council still hasn't weighed in on either the package of proposals, the different projects, or the way it will be funded. So I'm anxious to see 
how that evolves before I weigh in entirely. But I love the way you framed your question. What are the expectations about how this proposal, this package, this enormous investment would improve our response to climate stability, would reduce congestion, and would make our transportation system more equitable at all income levels and across all communities. I don't want to just have expectations. If I'm on the Metro Council and if voters approve this measure next fall when it's, it's intended to go forward, I want to bake into the implementation of that measure very specific outcomes and measurable goals that those investments will achieve. And I'd like to make sure that Metro's audit function has a big role in making sure that we set specific measurable results. We're going to reduce greenhouse gases by X millions of tons. We're going to improve freight transit through the region by X minutes per trip and other measurable things. But measuring, setting out those goals isn't enough. You have to audit and you have to be willing to change course if a tactic that you initially started with isn't working. Thank I've you. I've got experience in that and that's what I want to bring to Metro. Well, I, we have about two minutes left okay. on two questions. So right. uh, how would you assess Metro's efforts to address the affordable housing and homelessness crisis? Um, well intended and um, well funded, thanks to the voters' approval in, tw in 2018 for an affordable housing bond measure, um, but not as, uh, not as focused and not as cost effective as it needs to be. Some of the projects that Metro has approved under the affordable housing bond measure are costing close to $400,000 per unit of so-called affordable housing. I think that's not good enough. Um, there are responsible builders building affordable housing at about $200,000 to $225,000 a unit. And if we follow their model, we'll be able to build twice as many units as if we follow the model that Metro's currently pursuing. If we don't, we're going to leave half the, the families that need this housing without it. And I think that's not acceptable. We have about 15 seconds. So if you can give me a one sentence answer, what is your position on the Metro ballot measure 2610 to support homeless services with a high earners tax and a business profits tax? Enthusiastic support. Absolutely enthusiastic support. Important, necessary, critical in terms of timing. I urge everyone to support it. Thank you very much, Mary. My pleasure. Thanks, Colleen. Thanks. This has been the Video Voter's Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.